Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from the TheRightTrader.com back today with another cryptocurrency video. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Spindle project as well as their ICO. As you can see, their crowd sale will start on May 9th of 2018 at midnight. You can see a counter right when you get on the website. And I will be leaving links to Spindle in the description of this video. Another important bit of information is that they do have an airdrop and bounty program where you can receive up to 2.3 million SPD tokens. And on this page, there's all the information about how you can sign up. The last date to enter, however, is May 8th. So keep that date in mind. And other than that, you can see that uh, on icobench.com, Spinnel got a very good rating, 3.8 out of 5 out of 14 expert ratings. So that's very telling right there. And with that being said, let's jump right into a little bit more uh, what Spindle is all about. Their, their challenge is basically that they want to educate uh, people that don't have much investment experience and kind of help them through investment and assets management in an enjoyable way to enrich their, their life and mind through Spindle, right? So they have a little bit of a financial system, I should say as well a asset management system that's fair and enjoyable basically right I'll get into much more detail uh, about what that's all about but as you can see uh, Spindle is a unique investment and asset management platform with utmost uh, transparency and fairness and you'll see that all throughout the project right and they do this of course through using blockchain and smart contract technologies making all of this unalterable and highly transparent right and those things are of course only possible by uh, using blockchain and smart tr contract technologies, right? So it's not a matter of, of trusting a certain company or a certain person. This is all right on the blockchain. I'm going to cover their, their white paper in, in just a second here, uh, and I'll go for their members and advisors as well in the white paper. I wanted to point out some of their um, media and news attention that they got because there's some pretty impressive stuff. The Nikkei top leader uh, published an interview with the Spindle CEO. Uh, they also have a interview uh, with Forbes Japan, GQ Japan, Nikki Money. So the CEO here got interviewed by uh, all these different platforms. It just shows that they're already established, right? The, the people on the team already have experience. You'll see that when, when I cover the, the team. But uh, all of this is engineered by Blackstar. Uh, so the Blackstar group was established by experts in finance, investment, law, and technology uh, as a response to kind of their concerns about how the economic situation is turning and they want to find, you know, a better way to do things, basically. So let's jump right into the white paper. Now, as you can see, they, they cover at the beginning some of the problems right now in the space. What we can see is basically an inhibition of free trading due to excessive regulation, uh, an inhibition of free trading due to excessive consumer protection and inhibition of improving the investment literacy of common people, right? And that's something that they mentioned uh, right on the, the front pages that they want to help educate people about all of this and inhibition of decentralization. They go over this in more detail, but they also talk about how they plan to uh, fix these problems and their solution to them. So they go over, you know, the, the, their mission basically and first off, their, their fair and free investment asset management platform, right? So their goal is to create autonomous human beings. And Zeta, their platform, is uh, transparent and fair and will now uh, enable more people to enjoy a rich life through investment and asset management. Uh, they also have automation of credit scoring and uh, post-decentralized fundamentalism. So a lot of what you see here uh, and, and everything that relates to Spindle and their platform is basically, you know, one side of it is kind of the uh, distributed slash decentralized side of things. And the other side of it is kind of the automation, make, making things autonomous uh, and, and all the benefits that come from that, right? And the platform is called Zeta here. So what is it all about? Well, there's multiple stages to it, right? There's the first stage, which is monitoring and reporting service. There's a second stage, which is the unique distributed exchange. The third stage is the distributed credit scoring system. And the fourth stage is actually credit autonomy, right? So almost a bit more live aspect of that. They go over this in a lot of detail. Um, you know, they have little uh, images to, to explain this and more, more information, but 
What you have to know is that the monitoring and reporting service that's going to be on the Zeta One, uh, and there's also going to be you know premium services to that. Uh, I'll cover that in more detail in just a second. The vision of, of Spindle, right, and Zeta's schedule of launch. You can see what's going on. So basically, you know, April 2018, uh, Spindle itself. Afterwards, we have uh, the listing on the first exchange. I think that's going to be around uh, June and maybe end of May, but. You can see here in between April and uh, July 2018. So Spindle uh, promotion of eight listing and about 10 exchanges within a year. Zeta development as well starting April 2018. Uh, over here we can see that starting October 2018 there's going to be the Zeta alpha test. And that's going to be private including a few SPD holders. January 2019 the Zeta beta test and that's going to allow all SPD holders to access it. Uh, April 2018. 2019, sorry, there will be the Zeta format service started. And as you can see here, a little bit into 2019, there's going to be the premium service of the Zeta platform. Uh, so allowing recommendations, legal audit, stuff like that. Cover that in more detail in just a second, as well as the uh, further back here, rolling back uh, starting J July 2018. So a bit sooner, there's actually going to be the freemium version of the Zeta platform, right? And, and those will uh, allow free and useful services such as uh, record the profiles and transactions of crypto hedge funds, uh, prevention of tampering and certification, right? So blockchain again, uh, external provision of API, providing reports uh, that are easy and accurate to understand, as well as you can actually visualize uh, visualization of your investment performance. So uh, they go over, you know, the number of users throughout all of this and as well as valuations for these type of projects. Uh, the second stage will be the unique distributed exchange, right? And that will be uh, in, in Zeta 2. So that's going to be a uniquely distributed exchange. And they cover, you know, kind of the issues that we've seen with centralized exchanges such as Mt. Gox and CoinChecks, massive amount of financial loss. And they have, you know, a solution to that, which is obviously the distributed exchange, right? And they believe that... Um, you should have control over your own properties as well as uh, an easy commission or transfer of your asset management without the unnecessary risks, right? And that you shouldn't need to necessarily transfer management. <clears throat> there's, there's a better solution to that, which is what I'm going to cover uh, in just a second here. But basically, Zeta 2 has the following characteristics, right? There's going to be an atomic high-speed uh, distributed exchange featuring layer two technologies. There's also going to be trustless follow trading system, which is basically, you know, copy trades and information provision in conjunction with Zeta one. So first off, right, the atomic uh, high speed DEX uh, distributed exchange that will allow for, you know, a better solution to what we've seen here with people trying to make a uh, decentralized exchange with a lot of issues, right? With, uh, slow transaction times, large fees, it's not really usable, but with their uniquely distributed exchange, uh, that will be able to solve those problems, including, you know, scalability issues and all of that, right? And they're also going to do that through atomic swaps. Trustless follow trading system. So here it's not actually, you know, other people taking control of your money and your assets and doing the management for you. You can follow people who have experience and, you know, copy basically their trades, and to, to try to mimic the performance that they're having and all of that will be done through smart contracts and things like that, right? Where you're still ultimately in control of what's going on. Uh, they also have the information prevention in conjunction with Zeta one, and that's going to be that automate automation that I was talking about, right? Over here, the phases is going to be a dispersed exchange with a limited transaction focusing on ERC 20 tokens. The phase two will be a dispersed exchange allowing atomic swaps. And phase three, the final stage, will allow for the fully decentralized uh, dispersed exchange. So what that looks like here, the architecture, you have the user, you have the hedge funds, and over here you see the copy trading that can be done. Uh, on the front end, there will be the SPD wallet or MetaMask plus IPFS. So the SPD wallet, it will interact with the Ethereum blockchain. Um, on the back end, you know, big chain distribution uh, for order books, performance reports, uh, various reports, you know, investment reports, stuff like that. But for the Ethereum blockchain, there'll be the atomic swaps with other blockchains that will allow that. And, and that's how they will get this fully decentralized exchange up and running, right? 
uh, without all the, the negatives that we've seen in the past with people that try to make these, these decentralized exchange, right? That's why they say dispersed exchange. That's the key there uh, in their, their uniquely distributed uh, system. So they also have a distributed credit scoring system. Uh, this will allow to basically ultimately make uh, autonomous credit. And they have, once again, a little um, image with, with how the, this is going to be go about. More importantly here, um, they, they talk about all the issues and fairness issues that, that have been seen in centralized organizations. And also, you know, you've seen hacks happen in the past. This, this uh, technology here on, on Zeta 3 will allow for a dispersed credit uh, scoring system that is fair and independent of specific individuals, companies, or countries, right? So there won't be all those issues of, of people accessing the data, stuff like that necessarily. Uh, down the line, right, autonomous credit scoring will be made by uh, the dispersed architecture based on objective transaction on Zeta 2 and rating between users, right? So fair and adequate credit scoring will realize uh, a real asset assessment of economic freedom because that's what they're all about, like I mentioned previously. So the fourth stage is automation of credit scoring. And uh, going into a bit more detail, the Zeta ecosystem. So the SPD tokens are classified as utility tokens and SPD can be used to pay for each service available on the Zeta ecosystem. So just to go over that, right, we have the uh, Zeta 2 decentralized exchange. We have Zeta 1, you know, investor reports. Uh, we also have the Zeta 3 de decentralized credit score that goes back to Zeta 1, right? So you can see the cycle here uh, that will allow this to, to all work out. And for the token use case, uh, we have, you know, Zeta 1 premium service. We have the Zeta 2 free payment for following and the Zeta 3 lending service with decentralized uh, credit score. So that's why it's almost like a whole financial system here uh, planned out along, uh, around Spindle and, and Zeta and the three parts of Zeta, right? For the roadmap here, a little bit more information uh, for, for each stage on Zeta. For Q1 2018, stage one of monitoring and reporting services, including both freemium services and premium services. Uh, for stage two, that's gonna be where um, the decentralized exchange will come into place for Q3 2018. Q1 of 2019, we're gonna see stage three, so the decentralized credit scoring. And finally down the line here, Around Q2 of 2020, there will be the stage four credit autonomy. So, uh, like I said, there will they, there is a spin a wallet here, and that will uh, be able to interact with Zeta uh, down the line. It looks like um, they will be integrated within one year, so that there will be usability between the two platforms. Going into a bit more detail about the actual uh, token issuing, so token name SPD. Uh, it will be an, a utility token on the Ethereum. ERC20 blockchain and the total supply is uh, 10 billion as per usual here we have uh, bonuses if you get in earlier so as you can see right on a launch day here actually a 30% bonus and that decreases 5% uh, each day so the earlier you get in the bigger bonus you will get during the ICO and uh, payment that will be accepted Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum so moving a little bit forward here we can see that um, for the distribution, uh, the majority of that will be going towards the main sale. And for the allocation of the proceeds, uh, we have some uh, merger and acquisition strategy, 25%. Uh, a lot of it also going to tech development. And I just thought very interested that they added that merger and acquisition because obviously they're a financial platform and they could really expand uh, through, through the use of funds there and through acquiring or merging with uh, certain entities. Now to go over the team, uh, very experienced here. The CEO was actually involved with a uh, public company on the Tokyo Stock Exchange uh, investment, you know, holdings. A lot of experience, a lot of people who are linked to the Bullion Japan. You can take a look at uh, in the white paper if you, if you want to get more information, but everyone is very qualified. Uh, a lot of people have uh, some, some investment experience here, have worked uh, with publicly traded companies in the past and for some of their alliance and partners as far as cryptocurrencies are concerned bitcoin cash and the bullion token uh, mediabitcoin.com a number of other partners as well uh, here they talk about their marketing so initially uh, spindle was mainly focused for members of the uk and japan and they actually decided to really expand globally right 
as they mentioned, it quickly became one of the biggest ICOs in uh, in Asia for in a very quick period of time, and and that's why they decided to kind of take this globally, right? With that being said, this is the end of my Spindle review. If you're interested to learn more about them, I will have links in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.